So I did my first flip in 1983. The year before I was born. So that would be 30 years ago, right? Or 40 years ago. 40 Uh, 40 years ago. 40 years ago. 40 years ago. Yeah. The first flip I did, I was so stupid that I thought that everything that was a foreclosure was a good buy. That if it said foreclosure, that it must be cheap. Mm. I equated foreclosure with cheap, which sometimes is true. I think most people do. But I bought a, a HUD repo. They used to put them in the newspaper, and you would bid on them, FHA, ref, ref, FHA foreclosures, HUD repo. Out of the news, you had a newspaper as a bid process. I turned in the bid. I talked a banker into financing 100% of it because I had a real estate degree. I was a real estate guy. <laughs> I knew all about real estate. And I was 23 years old, so I was oh a freaking gosh. genius, okay? And so I bought this house. Um, I knew everything about the house before I bought it. I'd gone through it with a fine-tooth comb. Okay. The, um, in those days, they used, uh, we, we used uh, uh, copper pipes mm-hmm. for the water supply. And the, co- the house had been sitting empty, and so the copper pipes had frozen and split. And so it was pretty much a sprinkler system. Mm-hmm. underneath mm-hmm. uh and you had to go through and redo the copper pipes and i knew how to do that because i'd done renovations work in high school working wow. for my dad okay. in the real estate business so i crawled around on my little back under there with a little torch and fixed all of the spliced all these pipes fixed all the pipes uh put new carpet in it went in on the weekends and sharon and i repainted it okay and i kept all of my receipts for what i spent and paid myself zero labor okay that's how stupid i was and we put the house on the market and it sold in five weeks. So I'm a huge success. Net, net, net. When I got done, I added up what we had in it, what we paid for the closing cost, what we paid on the closing cost on the resale, mm-hmm. what actual, after every dollar is recorded, what actual net profit did I make? $842. You're an overnight success. I'm now a game on. Can't nobody tell I'm you nothing. I'm obviously good at this. <laughs> which means that I probably paid myself what a dollar an hour yeah. labor. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I didn't get paid for the labor. The oh 842 was with this free labor I had. I had slave labor, me. <laughs> yeah. You and were my your wife own. and my wife. Yeah. So wow. we're in there. So that was job one. Okay? okay. The next one I, I bought and I thought, well, I'm not buying any houses in bad neighborhoods. Cause I don't know anything about all that stuff. I'll get in trouble. But this guy called me up, and he had a house, and he sold it to me for $7,000. And I ran the what I thought was the estimate, and I had three contractors look at it and give us bids. Mm-hmm. And uh, the first contractor wanted a $1,500 deposit up front. Never saw him again. Right. Went to his trailer and knocked on the door in the trailer park trying to get my $1,500. Wonder I, wonder I didn't get shot. By the way, he had already left and gone to Kalamazoo or wherever it is contractors go when they take your $1,500 because you're an idiot and you give it to them up front, moron. Yeah. And so then I started on the second contractor, the third contractor, the fourth contractor. And uh, when I finished with that property, I had already done a whole bunch of other deals by then, Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, 60 or 80 more deals. Oh, my gosh. Uh By the time I finished that property. I ended up only losing fourteen thousand dollars on a house I paid seven thousand for four and a half years later. Oh my gosh! This is how dumb I am. So if that had, wait, if that That's second house had been your first house, I would have been out of business. Yeah, I would have been Nate. Yeah, you would have been like, I'm never doing this. My again. wife would have been going, yeah. Instead, I managed to delay the pain on that one. Meanwhile, doing a whole bunch of others, and I made a lot of money. Yeah, I made a lot of money. I ended up in my life, I have owned over 2,000 pieces of real estate. I flipped real estate as my job for four years. I was using 90-day notes to fix them and flip them. I made, and I started buying property at 70 cents on the dollar, minus repairs. Wow. So a $100,000 property, I buy it for 70 minus the repairs. That Mm -hmm. was the formula. And that means I bought a lot of foreclosures, a lot of estates. I did some historic rehabs. Mm -hmm. We've done a bazillion deals. I can walk around Nashville and show you I did that house, that house, that house, that house 30, 40 years later. I want to take that tour. And uh, now you don't want to be in that neighborhood probably. But um, Okay. (laughs) Some of those neighborhoods are now gentrified. But um, Gotcha. Yeah, they've come back a long way from $7,000. Now it's 260 to live on that street, and it's a 
great property. Not really. Still in Dodge City. You shoot up and down the street if it's Dodge City. I don't care whether it's gentrified or not. Mm. So anyway, the uh, you're killing me here. But yeah, so this is this is my real estate career. So when I get aggravated at the idiots on Tic Tac, it's because I was one of them. Yeah. Okay. I was doing the exact same stuff, and I can smell neophyte beginner a mile away yeah. because I was, I was, tw- I was 23. I was going to get rich in real estate. I made $842 minus the cost of my labor. I lost $14,000. And then I went on to make money and make money. And I started figuring it out that I had mm-hmm. to, you know, I had to, I had to, I had to be tough with contractors. I had to get with good ones and I, and I had to have be tough on schedules. Mm-hmm. You had to be finished. Mm-hmm. And then you put the house on the market aggressively and you flip it. You don't keep it ever. And, uh, you know, not like her, we're not in the rental business. And right. then I, then I ended up buying a bunch of property. I buy packages of houses and I buy 10 or 20 at once and they were rental portfolio. Mm-hmm. And I, I lost every bit of that when I went bankrupt in, uh, in, in 1988, five years later, I wow. had now owned, I had $4 million worth of real estate when we went in. That's a fast, went into bankruptcy. Yeah. that's a whirlwind day. It was, I worked all the time. And I was really, really good at doing deals. But I'm saying to but, go from zero to hero or yeah. hero to zero. And back. Oof. Zero to hero to zero. <laughs> That's a PhD in D-U-M-B oh, is what goodness. that is. Yeah. And so, but uh, I got a lifetime of learning there and it led me to have a bullcrap meter that is very sensitive to real estate people. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you, you know, when you guys are talking about real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate, because real estate's real hot, right? right. Now. It's a popular fad topic again. Everybody wants to do a real estate deal. Everybody wants to do a flip. Everybody wants to own a real estate. And your renters will pay your rent. Renters will pay the payment. You don't worry about it. it says people who've never had renters. Mm-hmm. That's a dumb butt statement. Okay, let me tell you, let me teach you some words. Chapter 13, Mm. bankruptcy for I will pay you when by God I want to. Okay, and let me tell you what you can do with a tenant who's in a bankruptcy. Nothing. Wow. You have a stay on you, which is an injunction. A federal court has looked at you like a dog and said, stay. And as a creditor, if you even call your tenant, you can be held in contempt really? of court. Wow, you I didn't know that. You cannot talk to them. You cannot do anything except everything they wish as far as repairs while they pay zero rent. Wow. Because you stay, dog, stay. Yeah, you learn this when you've had a couple of them. So when renters are always, they're going to pay the payment, and it's a free house, and I'm, I, you know, I, I have a jet airplane, and you're just an <laughs> idiot. You're just an idiot on t- TikTok. That's what you are. It's unbelievable. Well, here's so the- real, real estate is great, but you, there's a people factor with the contractors. There's a people factor with the renters. Mm-hmm. There's a people factor when I overestimate how what the uh how 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 much money i'm going to make i underestimate the contractor the time it's going to take to run it i i i think it's going to sell faster than it is Mm -hmm. because i'm always a glass half full guy and right before that's when you get your freaking nose bloodied slow down people pay cash for this stuff and run it like a business not like a get rich quick scheme it's your only hope of doing making money in real estate it is not a poor man's game i think that's the part that anybody can take away from this is it would be one thing Dave I feel like if you were sitting here going I tried that real estate thing and this is what happens and it was just like this negative story but then you go on and figure out the best way to do this the smarter way to do it the way that actually works and that's what you're teaching it's not like you're saying stay away from real estate never do it there's just a right and a wrong way to do it I was 24 years old I had a million dollar net worth in 1984 and I made $250,000 that year that's 20000 bucks a month mm. in 1984. Rich. Okay? In 1988, my taxable income was $6,000. Wow. All I did was sell property in bankruptcy. This is The Ramsey Show. <laughs>